Stay connected to your community and save. Just 99 cents a month gets you three months of unlimited access to inform.com. Visit inform.com slash subscribe and get your first three months of news for only 99 cents a month. Leave it to Beaver star Hugh Beaumont once owned a Christmas tree farm in Minnesota. Hi, this is Tracy Briggs and welcome to Back Then. Well, as many of you head to the Christmas tree lot this season to pick out that perfect pine, what would you think if one of America's favorite TV dads, Ward Cleaver, sold it to you? Yes, that Ward Cleaver, as in June's husband and Wally and the Beaver's dad. Well, it sounds like a fever dream, right? Like if Greg Brady took your order at Starbucks or maybe Gidget soaped up your tires at the car wash. But Ward Cleaver helping you with your Christmas tree could have actually happened. Hugh Beaumont, who starred as Ward Cleaver in the popular family sitcom Leave It to Beaver from 1957 to 1963, was once the proud owner of a Christmas tree farm in Grand Rapids, Minnesota. However, most likely Beaumont wasn't the guy strapping the spruce to your car top after you purchased it. And as far as I can tell, Barbara Billingsley was also never spotted on the lot in her high heels and pearls. According to Carl Wegner, a longtime Christmas tree farmer in Grand Rapids, Beaumont's business plan was to raise the trees in Minnesota and then ship a number of them to California to sell to customers there. One popular photo from the Minnesota Historical Society shows Beaumont presumably selling a tree to North Dakota native Lawrence Welk. Given the sign behind the two men advertising Minnesota trees, it's likely that this was a publicity photo taken at a lot in California. I would recommend you look at this photo. It's pretty fun. You can find it, of course, with my story on inform.com, or you could also just simply Google Beaumont and Welk and Christmas trees. I'm sure it would pop up. Now, if this story weren't unusual enough, Wegner said Beaumont had a pretty interesting partner in his Christmas tree business. He said... The guy who owned the other half of the 40-acre farm was a former Marlboro man, as in the cigarette Marlboro man. So Wegner said, so you'd see the pictures of him around town, but he must have been friends with Hugh because they did get into business together. Wegner says the farm was eight miles east of Grand Rapids on Highway 2 and south about four miles. By the early 1970s, Gresham had sold his half of the farm to Wegner, who was a young farmer just starting out. Wegner said later Beaumont approached him about buying his part of the farm, but he wasn't able to do that, so it was eventually sold to someone else. But what first brought Hugh Beaumont, Ward Cleaver, to Minnesota? After all, we know he was a native of Lawrence, Kansas, but what probably brought him there was his wife. She was born in Minnesota. Catherine Elizabeth Hahn was born July 15, 1920, in New Ulm. After the death of her Methodist minister father, Reverend Christian Hahn, it appears the family relocated to Crookston, where she attended Central High School. Following graduation, she attended Hamlin University, where she competed and won a radio contest called Gateway to Hollywood. She began using the stage name Catherine Adams, and then she scored her first screen part in 1939's Fifth Avenue Girl, starring Ginger Rogers. She is probably best remembered as Mrs. Brown in the 1942 Alfred Hitchcock movie, Saboteur. She married Beaumont in 1941, and according to newspaper reports of their wedding, the couple planned to honeymoon in Minnesota. The couple eventually had three children, Hunter, Mark, and Kristen. Catherine retired from show business to raise the children. However, she came back briefly in 1946 to co-star with her husband in Blonde for a Day. It's not clear how often the Beaumonts came to Minnesota, but the Facebook group Sharing Minnesota History and Experiences features not just the story of Beaumont's Christmas tree farm, but also details about the family's life there. They reportedly had their own island on Lake Wabana near Grand Rapids. While the official name of the island is Balgillo, it was nicknamed Beaumont's Island for obvious reasons. Steve Farrell said he remembers the Beaumonts being in Minnesota in the late 1960s. My stepdad, Dr. Farrell, was his doctor when he was there in the summer. We had dinner there once when I was about eight, and his son Hunter was there. He wrote that on the Facebook page. Doug Kelder wrote, 
He would fly there in a seaplane, and then he had meals at a resort on Wabana. Others who said they met Hugh Beaumont in Minnesota said he was pleasant and down-to-earth and generous. Terry McArdle wrote this on the Facebook page. He used to play some golf at Pokagama. When I was 12, I caddied for him. He even let me play along with him when I caddied. He was extremely pleasant and friendly. He tipped well, too. I liked him. Others on the page said they believed he also might have had a cabin on Clubhouse Lake by Marcel. While his time spent in Minnesota was long after his Leave it to Beaver days, Beaumont kept busy writing screenplays, perhaps penning a few while enjoying the serenity and call of the loons on Lake Wabana. He also followed in his father-in-law's footsteps, becoming a Methodist minister. In 1969, he told the Minneapolis Tribune that, despite making recent guest appearances on shows like Mannix, The Virginians, and Petticoat Junction, he didn't want to talk about TV. He preferred to talk about his Minnesota-born wife and how he enjoyed being behind the camera in Minnesota. He had directed local theater in St. Paul, Grand Rapids, and Hibbing. It seems one of America's favorite dads enjoyed his quiet life in Minnesota. After suffering a stroke in 1970, Beaumont retired from acting, and according to his obituary in the New York Times on May 16, 1982, he spent his later years living in Minnesota. It is believed his ashes were scattered over Lake Wabana. Catherine Adams and Hugh Beaumont divorced in 1974. She remarried and became a successful psychologist and author. She died in Mankato in 2016 at the age of 96. And that is back then for this week. Thank you so much for joining me. Hope to catch you next time. Get reliable and accurate local news with Inform.com. Inform.com is your trusted local news source with journalists dedicated to keeping you informed about what's happening in your community. Visit Inform.com now.